The White House and Republicans across the country are going to realize what happens when you lose power in the House. And yes. the committee chairs flip uh, across the board. And uh, they uh, they have lined things up in a significant way. Not only Jerry Nadler, but Adam Schiff has threatened to go uh, deep in the tax returns on behalf of Donald Trump. We'll see whether or not that goes anywhere. John Radcliffe, a moment ago, uh, we asked him how far that could go. And Nancy Pelosi said it's going to take a while. You know, uh, th this isn't something where you just fire off a letter and get an answer immediately. Hogan Gitley, Deputy White House spokesperson, uh, with me now for the North Lawn. Uh, Hogan, good morning to you. Thank you for your time. I'm going to squeeze some, uh, a few questions in here be before we get underway. I know the president is not happy with Adam Schiff. He's made that uh, quite clear. H how far do you think Adam Schiff can go in his inquiries? Well, look, that's a question for Adam Schiff. The president outlined a message at the uh, State of the Union, which was very clear. The Democrats have a choice here. They can either choose America's greatness, uh, they can choose to move forward this country and help out the American people, or they can mire this country in endless, pointless, uh, needless uh, investigations that have no merit and, and warrant uh, uh, no time uh, whatsoever. It's absolutely pointless to have these conversations when the president has done nothing wrong. Everyone knows it. Years of investigations, years of paperwork and, and countless interviews and conversations. The president did nothing wrong. He's been very clear about that, and they have a choice to make here. There's a big and bold agenda the president laid out in that State of the Union moving this country forward to do all types of things, from infrastructure to immigration reform, um, uh, changing drug prices to make them lower, health care. And if they're going to sit back and choose investigations, uh, they're going to waste a lot of time, money, and energy that should be spent elsewhere. What do you think we learned today from Matthew Whitaker's testimony, Hogan? Uh, I, I can't get ahead of that, obviously, but I know what, what we learned yesterday, and that is the fact that Chairman Nadler tried to force uh, private conversations to be public when he knows uh, they are protected by law. And so that right there tells you uh, he's playing politics that is petty and pointless. And he needs to focus instead, as I mentioned before, on moving the president's agenda forward, the agenda of the American people, doing things for them, the average man and woman across this country, instead of focusing on petty partisan politics. I mean, it was a hackish move. He's a political hack, and uh, we've got to move forward Let's here. see what we get from it, okay? I'm, I'm just trying to squeeze in a few more topics before we go to the, the uh, hearing. Uh, there is a call to, uh, on behalf of Mick Mulvaney, to go to Camp David over the weekend for uh, the members of Congress working on this border security committee. D does the White House sense a deal is about to be made? Well, one thing about that, I just talked to the chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, moments ago, and uh, this, this has no agenda whatsoever. He wants to build relationships with um, uh, former colleagues and friends uh, in, in Congress, but also uh, forge new relationships with those who've just come into office. He thinks that's important for us to move forward. And again, the agenda for the president uh, is bold and robust, and he wants to talk to them about that. But there's no agenda. There's no set conversation about border security. I'm sure it'll come up, uh, but it's not a formal meeting by any stretch. So, I see. Uh, so, that being so said, to, to, to assume that you're closer to getting a deal here uh, would not be accurate, right? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. Listen, our staffs here are in constant contact with folks in the conference committee. We expect them to do their jobs and put forth a package that actually protects the American people, uh, keeps the government open and funds it at, at uh, responsible levels. Uh, the president has been very clear about what he wants and his constitutional duty, that is, to protect the American people. We obviously gave him a few more days to figure that out. We're coming up on the deadline. And uh, look, it's all a time crunch at this point, and they've got to come to a solution that actually does uh, what they promised they would do, which is protect the American people. We expect no less. And quite frankly, the American people deserve it. Last point. New Green Deal. What's the reaction of the White House that was unveiled <laughs> yesterday on behalf of some Democrats? It, it's it's quite, quite rich for uh, Congresswoman uh, Ocasio-Cortez to point out the fact that we need to ruin our economy and uh, stop all air travel and stop all cars uh, in, in several years when she said the world's going to end in 12 anyway. So, I mean, the whole thing just seems kind of pointless. Look, the economy is robust like it's never been before. This president has single-handedly turned it around, and now Democrats are running on crushing all of those gains and crushing the middle class and uh, destroying any opportunity we have for growth in the future. And the line's been drawn here. I mean, the American people got to see in that State of the Union speech what they did, what the Democrats did not stand up Understood. for. They did not stand up for America's greatness. And that's obvious with this new Green Deal that has no chance of going anywhere. Hogan Gidley, thank you for your time. We are crunched on time, as you can clearly see. Thank you, sir, from the North Lawn.